Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the third and final lesson in this Blutilities tutorial, where we're taking things beyond the next level and into the new age. The next bit I'm about to teach you is very... I'm not sure what the word is. You have to be extremely careful because, yes, it's handy. Yes, it's really awesome. But if you're not careful, you can cause some serious issues in your project. You'll see why when we get there. So in this lesson, we'll be looking at giving the editor essentially a brain. So this means that the editor will be able to think for itself from what we teach it and act accordingly. You might be thinking at this point, whoa, you know, you said be careful. Now you're talking about giving the editor a brain. You're thinking some Skynet stuff. No, 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 not, not that advanced. It's different issues we're looking at, but it could be the basis of Skynet if you're smart enough to be able to get this to work. So what we're going to do is, as you see, I've removed all the matinee actors from the previous lesson from, from this uh, project. So go ahead and remove them. The blue utility is still in the scene. And when we open up the blue utility, I again have moved everything, removed everything rather, including the variables apart from our original event. So go ahead and do that. Remove everything apart from this one event. Um, and again, even if you delete, it's not the end of the world. Just create a new one and call it whatever you want. We're going to call this one start. Okay. And you'll see why in just a moment. So giving the editor a sort of fake brain. It's going to have to be done on a on a tick, for example. So, you know, every frame it's checking something. But you can't run ticks as a blutility. This is a failsafe run done most, oh, well, I assume anyway, done by Epic to make sure you don't blow the project up, you don't blow your computer up. Because some people could have some crazy stuff running on a tick. And if it's running on top of the editor, it could quickly drag everything down and give you a bad time, you know? So... What we're going to do is we're going to be using Tick's best friend, called a timer, to fake a tick, essentially. Basically, you just trick the editor into saying, oh, look, you know, I should be checking this every frame. And obviously not using the tick. So we're going to need three events here, three blue utilities, which is start, the thing we want it to do, and then stop. And stop is the important one, because the way... The way we're coding this is it won't stop until we tell it to stop, okay? Which you could probably guess already what the problems would be. You know, it would be constantly firing, so that's constantly eating up resources. And if you're doing something that increments, then, you know, it's just going to keep eating memory and memory until, you know, your computer's blown up, your house is blown up, your family's all dead, your pets are like, why did you do this? So we have to stress some caution here. So go ahead and what I'm going to do just to save some time is copy this event twice. As you can see, they're not calling editor, so we're going to set call an editor. So start content and stop. Right. So just a quick thing about these events, just explaining how this is going to work. Content, we're never going to fire in the editor ourselves. This is something that this utility will fire itself and it will do all of that, but we never fire it. The reason it's callable in editor is because this is the only way that the start utility is going to see this event to fire. Trust me, I've been down that road. The only way that the start event will see this contact content, sorry, event is if it's callable in editor. So we're gonna, that's why that is as it is. So obviously the basic flow is going to be start, which is going to set our timer off, the content, which is what the timer is going to do, and then stop, which obviously stops everything. Excellent. Dear. So on the start event, we're going to set timer. Make sure you select set timer by function name because set timer by event causes some issues. So the function name is going to be called content. Make sure it's spelled exactly case sensitive as this event here. So content, content. If, if you, you know you spell it weirdly and can't get it just right, make sure you can copy the graph node name here and then just paste it in here. Time. Now, time is dependent on how often you want this to fire. For our example, we're going to be running it every 0.1 seconds. 
Um, I would not recommend going faster than that because you would literally be spamming unbelievable amounts of data to your blueprint and to your editor and to your engine, to your computer. You know, you don't want your family to die in a massive explosion and everything as we previously discussed. So for this example, 0.1 is fine, but anything that takes slower is obviously better. Uh, is it looping? Of course it's looping. And then once you've done that, on this return value, right click, promote to variable, and call this timer. This is so when we end it, we know what timer to talk to. So again, for this example, let's just print a string here, print string, and it will say hello. Yeah, why not? Actually, no, let's make it say, this is the end, my friends. There we go. You don't have to do that. I'm just doing it because, you know, rebel without a cause and all that. Excellent. So once we've decided that's fired enough, we're going to stop. So what we're going to do is drag in the timer. Don't set it. Get it. And then we're going to say clear timer by handle, which essentially stops the timer. Excellent, so compile a save. Now what we're gonna do is click the utility as per usual. And as I said, remember, don't ever fire the content. It's not a bad thing. I just would recommend that you don't because it's worthless. We're gonna go ahead and click start and hit run. You'll notice, you know, hey, wait a minute, nothing's happening. Remember, print strings don't work in the editor. They print to the log, not to the screen. So let's go to our output log. And as you can see, whoa, we're getting spammed with this is the end, my friends. To prove this is spamming, let's click something. As you can see, whoa, it's going up. Look, no matter when I click this, that's still being spammed. So what we're going to do now, you know, to not blow up the house, is select the utility and then stop. And if by magic, as you can see here, it's now stopped. Hopefully this gives you the idea of running tick, well, a fake tick. In the editor and what we're going to do now is uh show you how we can start to give it a fake brain all right so you don't have to do this part i'm just showing you as a hey look that's pretty cool so this is going to be pretty dangerous uh, in terms of performance but it's just an example okay so we're going to do once and then we're gonna get all acts as a class like so. Obviously the do once no, make sure this only fires once because this is firing 0.1 seconds every time. It's making sure, well, wait a minute, let me finish first. Because obviously we don't want to ruin performance too much. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to set a specific value for our point lights, I guess. Why not? Every time we spawn one. So get all lights as a class, point light. And then for each loop, as we've said before, we're going to set their color to pink. Why not set color? Now let's set it, set it to purple. You know, the good old could say it's purple. Let's go ahead and do that now. So purple, like so. And then do we want to do anything else to them or just set their color? Let's see what we can do. Let's do something nice. Um... Let's let's go a bit. Uh, let's see. <laughs> okay, just color will be fine. Right. So once it's set the color, we're gonna say you can reset now. Why not? If you wanted to expand this, you could get all axes of class and then make sure compare it to a local array. Make sure that you know there's there's actual change in the array before firing this code. But for this example, you know, it's a no frills. Hey, look, this is pretty cool. So what we're going to do is go ahead and run the blue utility now. Actually, no, before we do, we're going to drag a point light in. So you can see they spawn as white lights. Vision streams of passion. Right, so they spawn as white lights. Awesome, we'll leave one in the scene. Right, so click the blue utility, select start, and click run. As you can see, the existing one has gone purple. Let's drag a new one in. It's white, now it's purple. It's white, now it's purple. Remember to hit stop. <laughs> That's all like, I can't stress that enough. Remember to hit stop. And so when we drag a new one in, it's now white. Excellent. This was very, a quick, you know, quick look. But hopefully it shows you, you know, hot diggity dang, you can do some cool stuff with blue utilities. 
giving it a fake brain, you could make it pretty much be your assistant in making a game. It can make sure everything's set up to specification. It could replace actors for you. Uh, it can do a whole load of things. You could teach it to be self-aware. You know, you have access to C++. You can expose some blueprint nodes, give it an extra bit of brain. But I think that's a great way to wrap up this course. If you enjoyed it, obviously, please rate it. It helps us, you know, produce better content. Um, please leave any comments. If you got any questions? Uh, I'd love to help out. Hopefully, you've enjoyed this. This is very, very expensive. English again. It's been a very experimental course, and I hope it's helped you. Um, let me know if it's helped you. You know, that would be quite fun to know. Apart from that, that is the end of this course. I want to thank you all for watching, and I want to wish you all a very nice evening, day, morning, or night. See you in the next course.